This accident demonstrates how a critical situation develops from a relatively small problem to a catastrophe. The investigation concluded that the pitot tube on the left side of the airplane was clogged. There was no dynamic pressure available for the captain's airspeed indicator, only static pressure. Therefore, the system functioned as an altimeter, which meant that with an increasing altitude, the indicated airspeed also increased. The takeoff was flown by the captain. When, during the acceleration, the co-pilot announced 80 knots, the captain realized that his airspeed indicator showed nothing. He shared this with the co-pilot, asked him to make the required speed calls, and continued the takeoff. During the climb, the captain had the impression that his speed indicator had begun to work again. For the remainder of the climb, the autopilot was turned on. The auto throttle had been engaged since takeoff. About two minutes after the start of the accident sequence, the warning message, Rudder Ratio Mock Speed Trim, appeared. The Rudder Ratio Changer limits available rudder travel as a function of airspeed. The captain expressed the belief that something was wrong. His co-pilot informed him that on his side, the airspeed was indicated at 200 knots and decreasing. At this point, the airplane was at about 5,000 feet at a pitch angle of 15 degrees nose up. The captain stated that neither airspeed indicator was providing a correct value. The overspeed warning then signaled the exceedance of the maximum allowable airspeed. On the captain's indicator, the airspeed approached the 360 knot mark. The engaged autopilot, working with the same data as the captain's airspeed indicator, responded to the seemingly high speed with a further increase in pitch. While the captain was assuming that the alarm was triggered by false speed data, he still tried to reduce the airspeed by manually retarding the throttle levers down to about idle. In spite of the captain's actions, the airspeed continued to increase. The investigators determined there was a high probability that the co-pilot's airspeed indications were correct. They also concluded that the standby airspeed indicator was also correct. When airspeed fell below the minimum allowable, the stick shaker activated as a warning of an impending stall. The pilots were thus faced with two contradictory warnings, a too high and at the same time a too low airspeed. In fact, the airplane was flying at a high pitch angle and a speed close to stall. When the airplane stalled and began to rapidly lose altitude, the co-pilot activated the altitude hold mode on the autopilot and concurrently the thrust levers were advanced to maximum thrust. Neither action was successful in arresting the descent. The engines were at high thrust, but the left engine lost thrust due to an engine stall. The aircraft rolled over its left wing, entered into a spin, and lost altitude rapidly. The crew could not regain control, and the airplane crashed into the sea five minutes after takeoff, about 20 kilometers from the coast.